with this for a little while, you know, come on, because a, a, the park is big enough to be able to still have some social distancing going on. So we do, we are still trying to, you know, keep active. We've had scavenger hunts online, go around your house, find these different things. And the first person that sends them all back gets a prize. And so, you know, we, we're still trying to keep our group active and, you know, keep up with everybody. Right. And still have some things to do as well, I guess, that aren't just virtual. Because I think right. people are getting a little burnout on virtual already. <laughs> Absolutely. I am so tired of it myself. <laughs> well, thank yeah. you for at least participating in this, even though you're getting burnout too. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, we, I've been question pop up asking about how parents are involved online. Um, and I feel like you maybe answered some of that and what you were just saying with like the secret sister um, and things like that. But are there other things that the parents are still doing? Um, online since maybe there's less wrangling having to be done um, yeah. or door watching things like that right um, we have had um several parents that have become involved in teaching an online class or monitoring an online class like we had one mom that um that is over our classes that she actually would set the class up online and um have it all ready and just give it over to a different parent for that parent to monitor it and make sure that kids are getting their information, answering questions, uh, making sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. And um, so we've had a lot of parent involvement that way. Okay, awesome. Let's see, I don't see any new questions there. Um, I had somebody send me one. <laughs> okay. Um, it says, what kind of outreach or public service projects do you do? And um, when we do have during a, like, I always go back to this before COVID thing. But, <laughs> right, um, that's what we're used to. <laughs> yeah, before COVID, we had a class that we called, um, oh, and my mind just went blank. Um, I can't think of it now, but it was a class where the kids gave back to um, the, like, for instance, we were meeting in a church, and so the kids were, they went around and they helped clean the church, or they would uh, clean out the flower beds, or they would, um, if the church had a, had a function coming up and they needed chairs and tables put out, they would do that, and it's, um, they would make little gifts for the teachers and give it to them or make things for the nursing home. And so we try to encourage our kids to um, be public servants. We, we want our children to understand the importance of giving back to those that help us. And, and even um, just in general, learning how to be kind, learning how to um, be helpful in ways without being asked to be to help you just see a need and you feel it and so we really try to encourage our kids to do that um and so the thank you the class <laughs> i had a reminder on here the class was called acts of kindness i cannot okay. remember that so um but the public service things that we do we do we do encourage our kids to really be thinking about other people um and we do offer those kids that need public service hours that I know a lot of kids need those for college and things like that. We, we help them with that. And uh, so they, they do a great job and we literally do like from littles four or five year olds all the way up to high school, do these things for us. Um, you know, we, we even made um, the church that we were at has a food pantry once a month and we had the little kids, color some little things that would go in the baskets of we're thinking of you or we've been praying for you or you know things like that and so the we start them out very young teaching them to be a servant and so that's a very big deal for us um i see somebody ask about the fall dance what, uh, what else do you offer that is kind of similar to a normal setting um <laughs> that one kind of threw me for a loop there. <laughs> um, we do, we are trying to do some different things for our kids. And, um, and like I said, just having parties for them, going skating. 
we, you know, we normally do like a Valentine party where they can make Valentine boxes and everybody drops a Valentine in their box. Um, Christmas, we, uh, we have done like little gift exchanges with the kids. And um, so we, we do a lot of things that, uh, you know, you would expect with um, public school kids that I know a lot of people worry about socialization with homeschoolers. And believe me, between all the activities that my kids have, they are socialized. <laughs> they, um, we do, you know, things through our church. We do things through, through our co-op. And um, we do um, all kinds of stuff. I mean, just we keep our kids very busy, sports, things like that. So our kids are very socialized. And so, um, but we try to do a lot of that in a positive setting so that we make sure that our kids are influenced by um, other kids that we would like, you know, to have a positive influence on them. We, you know, and that's one of the good things about homeschooling is that you can make sure that your children are exposed to the um, kind of things that you believe in and things that you see as important like I said, the, you know, just doing the acts of kindness, we, we see that as such an important thing to be able to take care of our population around us and, you know, our, our friends and our, our family. And, um, we're just, we are, we want our kids to, um, know how important it is to give back. Um, and something else I, I guess I could kind of, um, add on with the question about similar things. You did mention sports. Um, so there are some opportunities for them to do sports. Um, what about things like band and choir and yearbook, things like that um, as well, those Absolutely. other kind of extracurriculars? Right. Um, and we do offer um, graduation for our kindergartners and we are um, hoping to add a senior graduation to that. Uh, we have a yearbook and we have had every year um we have we teach that as a class and um and our yearbooks are just great they're they the kids really do a great job in capturing everything that's going on and it's going to be interesting to see how that works this year <laughs> uh, because so many of the things that we would normally be having in a class are going to be done at home and so we're really encouraging parents please take pictures of your kids because this is their class this is what we're going to be doing so Right. So we're really encouraging them to do that kind of thing. Um, in sports, we, um, we, my children personally, um, are active in uh, our city sports as far as like baseball, softball. And, uh, but we do have kids that participate in sports at school. And um, so like we have a lot of girls that go and play volleyball. Um, the boys will play baseball or football. And so they are able to do that. There is a waiting period. Um, and this is, I'm not really clear on this one, but if I'm not mistaken, if your child is taking a class during the day, they can participate in the sport. But if they are just there for the sport, I think they have to wait. Uh, there's a waiting period, but I don't want to, quote that because I'm not really positive exactly how that works, but um, I do know that the school does support us doing that. My children um, have not played a sport through the school, but my son did take classes for the past two years. He was taking two classes um, for pre-AP English and science because I wanted him to be able to do the labs at school and to, and just, you know, have to have a few things extra there that they were offering. So, you can do um, classes at school and at home. Um, the school has been really great in, in supporting homeschoolers. So that we've got a really great working relationship with our local schools. Oh, that's awesome. Know. It's good to know that you can kind of work together there. Absolutely. Um, it looks like we do have another question on here. Uh, where do you get like the curriculum um, Okay. that you use. I know you mentioned a couple different ones um, and you mentioned the, I'm trying to, it was rainbow something. Was the... yeah. Rainbow resource. Yes. It's, it's just a, it's just a warehouse that um, you can buy your curriculum from. Um, they carry just about everything there is to find. 
like I said, their, their catalog is really, really thick. And so if you can't find it at Rainbow Research, you probably don't need it. <laughs> but, um, but we do have at the end of the year, we, um, we have normally a, um, a used book sale. And so when parents get through with their curriculum, they can come back and uh, put it in the used book sale and sell their curriculum back uh, to any, or we put it out on tables uh, by grade and people can come and uh, go through those. And then a hundred percent of the money that is made on that goes back to that parent. And so uh, if they, you know, if you've spent $200 on curriculum and, uh, you're done with it. You're not, you don't have another child that can use it. You can go and take it to this, this used book sale and get some of your money back. But in the process, you may find something that you need. And so you can buy it at a discounted price as well. So it's really very helpful to have a used book sale. And then we'll also, like I said, have the library that we're setting up. So that will, that will be where you can come, our members can come in and um, check out curriculum and use it for the entire year and then bring it back when they're done. Okay, and so to clarify then, your um, your library is only going to be for ARCH members to check Yes. In. Okay. Yes, and the only reason that we do that is because um, the books are donated by members um, to this and um, they are very expensive and you're going, they would be um, checking things out for a solid year. And so um, just to be able to keep up with all of that and, um, like I said, the process of getting it through donate, you know, people donating it, um, it, we do have to make that available to our members, but that, that is a perk of becoming a member is that you get to use those things. Right, and that is definitely understandable, you know, somebody working in a library where sometimes we don't want to order something too expensive because what if something happens to it while it's out, you know? Exactly. Um, so that's definitely understandable, but just wanted to make sure that that was that was understood. Um, right. Well, well and we so also, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. Uh, we, we also have um, what we call a uh, curriculum share. And so that comes towards the end of the year when people might be thinking about the year ahead and whenever they're getting ready to order curriculum for the next year. We will contact companies and I contacted um, close to a hundred companies and they we got back from close to 50 um, different publishers that sent us free curriculum. And so um, they would send us, say, for instance, I don't know if you know this company, but Master Books is a company from Arkansas. Shirley English is another company from Arkansas. And those companies send us um, books and so we were able to have a curriculum share and this year we had to do it online because of course we were back in the COVID thing. So we did it online and we, we would discuss what the curriculum was. We would show pick, you know, be able to hold it up to the camera, show everybody what the curriculum looked like and they can get an idea of, um, would this work for my family? Would it not work for my family? And so, um, then at the end of the night, we were able to do drawings and we gave that, that curriculum away. We, we gave close to, um, I think I figured it up and it was close to about $3,000 worth of curriculum that we were able to give away. And then a lot of that, when the parents get through using it, has come back to us to be able to put back in that uh, library. So it's a wonderful resource for, to be able to, um, learn about different kinds of companies and, and what they offer. That is cool. And I didn't realize Shirley English was Arkansas based. Um, yes, they're that's actually what we used at my school in Alabama <laughs> when yes. I was a kid. So <laughs> they are out of Cabot, Arkansas and the master cool. books is up around, I want to say somewhere up around Fayetteville, somewhere in the Northern part of the state. Okay. That's, and that's cool that it's something local um, mm -hmm. as well. Um, so another question in the chat, do you have a website where people can learn more about Arch? I do have a website. <laughs> um, we are, I'm going to get this right because I always mess this up. Um, but we do have one. Uh, we have, we have two people that are actually working on it to um, make sure that 
we are answering questions and we are getting um, getting information out there where people can see where we are, who we are, what we stand for, and then also be able to um, answer questions. And then there's a blog on there that uh, two or three of the moms uh, add things to, and it's just day in the life of a homeschool mom kind of thing. So, but our, uh, our page is russellvillearch.com. And okay. so you can go to that page and be able to look it up and find out some information about us. All right. And when I go back and edit this, I'll put that in on the screen. Okay. <laughs> All right. So russellvillearch.com. That's great. Um, let's see. So is that the best place for peop people to go if they have questions or need need some support or is there anything else yeah. uh, any other resources you would want to recommend uh, um, you know, if somebody thinks of a question after this is over or sees the recording right right now I you know if you have um, questions just that you want to ask on a personal level um, they can email me and my um, my email address is arch homeschool membership at gmail.com or they can, like I said, look at the homeschool website. Um, but there are also other resources out there. We have lots of Facebook pages. Like I said, um, our friend M. Neely, she, um, she started, she saw a need and bless her. This lady, she, when she sees a need, she jumps on it and she's gonna make sure it's met. And so she um, she's awesome. And so um, she, actually started a homeschool page on Facebook that was just a homeschool helpers. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's River Valley and then uh, AR homeschool helpers. And I think that's it's, right. Cause I think I'm in that group as well. <laughs> I think that, yeah, I think that's where it's at. So, um, but they are awesome there. This, and it's just moms that, like I said, if you ask a question as many mothers that are out there or, or dads, that are out there that have the experience, you get that many answers. And I mean, it's just, um, it's just one of those resources that's just great because you can ask a question and you know that somebody out there is going to have the answer for you. Um, there's another Facebook page. It's called Arkansas Homeschool Cafe. And I'm a part of that one. Um, and I have had lots of questions answered just for myself through that page. Um, and then uh, there are, there's another co-op in our uh, county and that is REACH and I'm actually a member of it too. It was the first co-op that I was with and ARCH is actually a branch off of REACH and um, so we were um, able to uh, be part of both of those and they offer things that we don't offer and we offer things they don't offer so we kind of work together with that and so um, there's lots of wonderful resources but your best resource is a mom a mom that is that is a seasoned mom that's been out there in the trenches and got it done so that's the best way to go <laughs> All right, so and I think that answers that last question on there about if you guys have a Facebook page. Um, so are there any other questions before we wrap up or anything else that you want to add in that you think maybe we missed that we should know? Um, on the Facebook page, we do have um, a, our, our actual group page is a private page because of the fact that we do have our children on that page and so we don't have it for where you can search it, but if you do search Arkansas, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Arch on the Facebook page, we have one that is for public use. And all it has on it is um, just some information about us, how to get in contact with us and things like that. So you can go to that and look it up um, if you want if you want to know more information. And it, also, and it gives you ways to contact us. Um, and I think that was about all I had. All right. Well, I definitely want to thank you uh, for coming in and talking to us. Um, I think you've you've shared a lot of really good information, um, and hopefully soon we'll get this edited and up on um, the the recording up on Facebook and YouTube, um, so people that weren't able to tune in tune in um, can still watch it and make sure we you know make note of all those great resources you mentioned, uh, so that if they do have questions they have, you know, places to direct those questions. Uh, but thank you so much for joining us and have a great night. Thank you. Thank you very much. You have a great night too.
Thanks. Bye.